The CEO of Walmart just issued a dire warning about the US economy saying that we could see deflation in 2024, a situation that could cause prices across the US economy and housing market to decline while also causing the unemployment rate to surge. With the historical unemployment rate during periods of deflation routinely approaching 10%, you could see in the 1890s deflation, we had over 10% unemployment. In the early 1920s deflation, we had nearly 10% in the Great Depression. Depression, we had 20% unemployment. And then of course, in the 2008-2009 financial crisis, we also had 10% unemployment. However, there is a positive to deflation if it happens, and that would be that the cost of goods and services in the economy is likely to get cheaper, which is something that consumers need right now, because the inflation of the last three years has left Americans really struggling to get bought. With the personal savings rate in America now near an all-time low of 3.8% towards the end of 2023. You can see this is the average amount that the typical American saves. That used to be well over 10% back in the 1960s and 70s. Now it's only about 3.5%. The only other time the savings rate was so low in U.S. history was back in 06, 07, right before that last deflationary crash in 08, 09. One has to wonder, are we going to see a similar deflationary crash play out in 2024? Because when you look at price levels across the economy, yes, things are still very expensive. However, there are some things which are starting to get a lot cheaper. For instance, prices of newly built homes from home builders, which has declined by a record 18% over the last year. That's the biggest decline in prices on record for newly built homes, even bigger than what we saw in 2008. At the same time, we're seeing prices for other items in the economy like used cars also plummet with the Mannheim used vehicle index showing an 18% contraction in used vehicle prices from their peak back in 2021. Meanwhile, at the same time that new home prices and used car prices are going down, we're seeing airline fares plummet. In particular, Spirit Airlines cut their ticket prices by 28% from a year ago, while Frontier Airlines cut their prices by 32%. But perhaps the biggest deflationary signal we're seeing in the economy right now is in commodity prices. One by one, many commodity prices have collapsed from their peaks in 2021 and 2022 including oil, copper, steel, grain, wheat, with one of the biggest drops being in lumber prices, with trading economics reporting that lumber prices have now collapsed by nearly 60% from their peak back in 2021 and 2022 down to $500 per thousand board feet. That's roughly in line with what the lumber prices were before the pandemic. But now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're saying to yourself, is deflation really actually possible? Because after three years of inflation and after all the money printing that occurred during the pandemic, I think a lot of us have been geared to think that we're going to be seeing inflation for the long term and that things are just going to continue to get more expensive. However, the reality, folks, is things across the economy have to get cheaper in order for the economy to continue moving and growing. The economy can't continue to sustain itself with Americans only saving three and a half percent of their income. That's just not sustainable. We've never seen those low savings rates in U.S. history be sustainable before. So at some point, you know, people are going to run out of money. They're going to cut back on their spending. With Bloomberg reporting that consumers are pushing back on price, particularly at Walmart, who's saying now that prices could fall in 2024 as shoppers pivot from grumbling about higher costs to changing their behavior. The Walmart CFO in particular is much more cautious on the consumer than they were 90 days ago. Clearly, Walmart is seeing some things in real time that is alarming them, which is a massive deal, everyone. Walmart is the biggest company in America by revenue. Walmart's annual revenue is over $600 billion, which is almost 20% more than the number two company, Amazon. So when Walmart CEO and CFO are seeing something that's making them cautious about the consumer, causing them to drop the D word deflation, you should pay attention to it. But really, everyone, in order to deliver the type of deflationary crash in prices that consumers really need, we're going to have to see the housing market crash. We're going to have to see not just builder home prices collapse. We're going to have to see existing home prices. Resale prices also go down and we're going to have to continue to see rents go down as well because the housing market is over one third of the inflation calculation. The amount of money that people spend on rent and on mortgage payments is a huge part of their budget. So in order for there to be real deflation in the economy, we're going to have to see home prices and rents go down by more. And we're in this kind of interesting dynamic right now where I think most of you watch 
watching this program know that we're in a housing downturn. You know, when I poll you guys on what you're seeing in the housing market, 45% of you are saying that you're seeing prices go down on Zillow and Redfin in your market, whereas 38% of you are saying prices are staying the same. So that's over 80% of you saying prices are going down or staying the same with only 17% of you saying home prices are going up in your market. So that's a kind of a deflationary indicator right there. However, when you look at the mainstream news reporting on the housing market, it's actually kind of confusing because the mainstream news is still talking about home prices as if they're still going up. With CNBC saying that home prices kept rising even as mortgage rates surged according to the S&P Case-Shiller Home Price Index. Home prices being 3.9% higher in September compared with the same month a year earlier. And so what gives everyone? Why are some of these indicators and reports still saying home prices are going up when, when you look on Zillow, they're clearly going down? And the answer to that has to do with the fact that most housing market data that's reported in the mainstream is lagging. For instance, the Case-Shiller Home Price Index that you guys might have heard about in the news this week, it was for home closings in July, August, and September. So this home price data is literally as much as four to five months stale when it's reported. So don't be surprised if you see the Case-Shiller Home Price Index start to report more substantial declines into the future as it starts picking up some of these home sales over the fall and early winter where the prices are down. But really everyone, the true deflationary signal I'm seeing in the housing market and that you should pay attention to as a home buyer and investor is what's happening in the rental market. Because the rental market right now is in a severe crash in certain cities. For instance, take a look at this house for rent. It's located in Glendale, which is a suburb of Phoenix, and it's three bed, two bath on the market for $18.75 a month. But when you go back into the history here, you see that this house was purchased by a Wall Street investor in April 2022 for 400 grand, and they initially listed it for rent at 2200 back in August 2022. So they've cut the rent on this property down from 2200 to 18 1875, which is a 15% reduction in the rental rate on this house. Here's another example in Phoenix. We can see that this is a three bed, two bath on the market for $1,700 a month. Now, if we go back into its price history, we can see it was initially listed for rent in September 2023 for $2,300. So literally the landlord on this rental in Phoenix has cut the rent 27%. And more and more, we're seeing these rents go down, not just in Phoenix, but also in other parts of America with apartment list reporting that 68 of the 100 largest U.S. cities have registered negative rent growth year over year through November 2023. So that's over two thirds of cities experiencing declining apartment rents. Where are these apartment rents declining the most? Well, that would be Austin, Texas, Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, Phoenix, Atlanta, Orlando, Raleigh, Jacksonville, San Antonio, and Salt Lake City. So a lot of these kind of boom towns in the South and the Mountain West, you can see these rents have gone down anywhere from three to 6% over the last year. However, I think those averages once again are underestimating some of the declines we are seeing in the market real time right now. So don't be surprised if those declines in rents get even bigger into the future, which is a telltale sign of deflationary forces and something that's going to make life miserable for a lot of real estate investors, particularly these big Wall Street real estate investors who bought up a lot of homes during the pandemic. They hate declining rents. Declining rents is the worst enemy for a landlord or Wall Street investor because a lot of these people, they're making a very low yield, a very low return on these investments to begin with. For instance, on this house that's renting right now for $18.75 a month. Well, if they get that rent based off their purchase price of $399,000 a year and a half ago, that's only about a 4% cap rate or net profit yield, which is well below the mortgage rate, well below the cost of debt, well below the one-year treasury. Well, predictably, some of these landlords are deciding not to rent out these properties anymore and to sell them. This is something I've reported to you guys over the last couple of weeks. We're seeing more and more Wall Street investors and landlords sell their properties. For instance, take a look at this one outside of Nashville. This is a three bed, two bath on the market for 340,000. It's a bit overpriced, a bit expensive. We can see it's above the Zillow value estimate, but really what I want you to pay attention to is the listing history here. You can see this property was purchased in April, 2022. We keep seeing that April, 2022 at the peak of the bubble, an investor bought it for 350,000. They tried to rent it out. And then a year and a half later, they said they had enough and are now selling it at a loss. They're selling this house at a $10,000 loss from what they bought it for already. And one has to wonder how much is this investor going to need to cut the price further? Because if we do some research here on PropWire and look up this property, we can see the owner is an entity called SFR Acquisitions 2 LLC. This entity owns over 23,000 homes, everyone. So this is a big Wall Street investor that's 
selling this property. And so folks, I want you to think about this fact pattern we're seeing in the housing market. We're seeing declining rents. We're seeing big Wall Street investors sell. We're seeing uh, the CEO of big consumer companies like Walmart seeing deflations going on. While we're seeing the Federal Reserve still keep interest rates at their current level of five and a quarter to five and a half percent. This is a recipe that could result in big problems in the economy in 2024. Because right now, the Federal Reserve is not only keeping interest rates way higher than they were a couple of years ago, they're also taking money out of the system through quantitative tightening. The Federal Reserve is literally destroying money in the economy right now. All that money that they printed, well now they're unprinting it. They've reduced their balance sheet by a trillion dollars and this is causing the money supply in America to contract. With the M2 money supply contracting by 3% year over year, this is the first contraction in the money supply that we've seen since, again, the 1950s, folks. Remember, it's been about since the 1950s since we saw real deflation. Well, it's also been about the 1950s since we saw a money supply contraction. And this is a pretty big money supply contraction. 3%, it might not sound like a lot, but that's the biggest that we've seen since the Great Depression. In fact, excluding the Great Depression, it's the biggest that we've seen all time in terms of money being taken out of the system. And so this is a, a warning to you guys out there, because if we compare the growth in money supply to the growth in inflation, what do you see, everyone? You see there's a huge correlation here. When the blue line, the money supply goes down historically, the inflation goes down and vice versa. And so, so long as this money supply continues to contract, inflation should continue to go down and potentially turn into deflation. Now, of course, the Federal Reserve can always change what they're doing. If the Federal Reserve were to suddenly go back to printing money like they did during the pandemic, that's something that could cause the money supply to go back up and then reignite inflation. And so that's always a possibility. We don't know what the Federal Reserve is going to do into the future. However, right now, what they're doing suggests we're going to see further tightening in the amount of money in the economy, which is going to necessitate the prices of goods and services to go down, aka deflation. And I want to be really clear about something for you guys out there. Deflation is bad news for the housing market. Because home prices right now, they're so expensive relative to every other benchmark, relative to inflation, relative to income, relative to rent. Home prices are just so expensive right now. And so the only saving grace that the housing market could potentially have where home prices won't crash is if inflation were to reignite and get really, really bad. But if that's not going to happen, well, the path of least resistance is then for prices to go down. Because you can see on this graph showing home prices going all the way back to 1890. This is 130 years of home price data in America adjusted for inflation. What do you see? Current real home prices are down slightly from their peak. However, they're still at basically the highest level of all time, meaning that prices are just still really, really expensive. They're getting cheaper, as we've seen and talked about, but they're still very, very expensive, even more expensive than the 06 bubble. And in fact, home prices are 80% higher than their long-term 130-year inflation adjusted average. And so if we don't see significantly higher inflation, that means the only way to really correct this issue is for home prices to go down. But now, potentially another way to correct the affordability problem in America's housing market is for mortgage rates to go down. And that's something we've started to see over the last month. Mortgage rates have declined from peak of 8% to about 7.2%. So we are seeing mortgage rates improve. And I think some people in the housing market are getting all jazzed up now that because mortgage rates are down to seven and maybe the Fed's going to cut rates next year, that everything is going to be saved and uh, home prices won't go down. But I want to give you guys a reality check on that. And to let you know that actually interest rates right now are not that high compared to long-term norms. Because you can see these blue bars, which is the 10-year treasury minus the inflation rate, the real interest rate as it's called. We can see that's only slightly positive in 2023. We have a 10-year treasury of around 4.2% minus an inflation rate of around 3.9% for the year. You can see this real rate is actually still pretty accommodative. Like historically, going back 130 years, real rates have a tendency to be much higher than they are today. So actually, the interest rates are not the problem in today's market. The interest rates are now basically approaching normal. It's the prices, which very clearly are the problem. So this is just a very important graph for you folks to understand. Over 130 years of data is showing us on the housing market that what's different about today's market is that prices are in a massive bubble, not that interest rates are too high. And the easiest way to solve that disconnect is through deflation. Price deflation would bring prices down while also causing real interest rates to go up. Because if inflation were all of a sudden go negative, that would make real rates go higher, which would make monetary policy more restrictive, even if the Fed started cutting rates sometime in 2024. And I want to actually leave you guys here on an optimistic note. And that's that deflation has a lot of negative connotations in the economic sphere. We had some deflationary forces in 2009, 
2008, it was really, really bad for the economy. But there have been situations historically in America where deflation has been good for the economy, most particularly back in the 1920s. That was one of the most prosperous decades for the US economy in history. However, during that decade, the prices of goods and services went down. So you can see on this graph, prices started going down in 1921. Then there was big deflation in 1920-22. And then actually later in the decade, there was price declines as well. And total prices in the 1920s went down 11%. There was an 11% deflation in the 1920s, yet our economy as a country did really, really well. And I'm thinking maybe could something similar happen in the 2020s ahead? Could there be another roaring 20s? Well, I think maybe, but for that to happen, we would need to see a correction in prices across the economy. A pretty big correction first, because things have to get a lot cheaper. Home prices, rents, the cost of food and groceries. We're gonna need to see those things get cheaper to give consumers more money to spend out of their budget before we can see uh, sustainable growth in the long term. So I would encourage people to not be scared about the prospect of deflation. I think we're starting to see the early warning signs in a lot of different components of the economy. And I personally hope it continues. I hope the prices of goods and services get cheaper for everyday Americans because that's what we need in order to instill long-term economic growth. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. Do you see deflation occurring around you right now? Or are you still seeing inflation? What do you think is gonna happen over the next couple of years in the economy? Let me know in the comment section below.